Hi guys, that's what I said for doing. Good, 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 I hope. Um, a Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab review. Oh my gosh, I always have to remind myself to do them. I haven't done one for a very long time. Um, but I've been wearing this one recently, just after my nose got better. So I can finally actually review it. It's a relief, I'm not going to lie. This fragrance is probably one of the simplest fragrances that I've smelled from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab in terms of how many notes there are. Duh. But I'm not saying that it is a simple fragrance by any means. So, Rose Cross, what is it? I don't know. Um, I had to look it up because, um, yeah, I did. Because I'm just dumb sometimes. This is part of their Sin and Salvation line. It came out a really long time ago. It's part of the general catalogue, so you can still buy this. And I've never really been one to be drawn to the Black Phoenix Alchemy Labs rose type fragrances. There's only one that really kind of sticks out in my head, and that is, um, it's called Two, Five, and Seven, which is part of the, I did Four Fingers. <laughs> it's part of the Mad Tea Party line, which is the Alice in Wonderland inspired ones. And Two, Five, and Seven is named after the three cards that paint the roses red in Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah, go and check it out. If you're a rose lover, I think it's got about seven or eight roses, maybe even more. Tons of roses. Anyway, this one, it jingles. Anyway, this one, yeah, this is a more religious typed themed fragrance. And this is what it says on their website. A profound symbol of an individual's personal, I don't even know what this word is, initiatic process. Something to do with initiative, I'm guessing. Um, spiritual refinement and evolution. Synthesis. Grace found as a result of trial and suffering. This sounds scary. Um, and the alchemical process by which we transform the raw essence of our souls through light and extension. <sighs> That's just brain fart. That's a lot of words. That's a lot of processing. Let's process that for a minute. This is a holy oil. A representation of the triumph of spirit over matter. And there's only two notes. Um, purest rose with sacred frankincense. That's pretty much all there is in it. Um, so th that's kind of it. So let's just rub it in. It's an oil, so I'm allowed. I've said that before. More people are quick to say, you shouldn't rub that on your skin. Like I said, I've never been gravitated, I've never gravitated towards the Black Phoenix Alchemy Labs, or BPAL, I'll say for sure, because it's going to be a mouthful every time. I never gravitated towards BPAL's rose fragrances, um, but the ones I've smelled have been great. I took a great, massive hiatus from buying and using Black Phoenix fragrances. I'm not sure why, I just did. I was going in other, in other directions for a while. This is so intensely rosy. There are two ingredients, frankincense and rose. Frankincense is the backdrop of the fragrance. Rose is way at the forefront. And the rose that's in this is an intensely jammy, full-bodied rose. No powder here. It's strange because sometimes when I smell this, I think that the rose is almost verging on geranium territory. You know, if you've never smelled geranium before, it is a rosy type aroma and it's a very intense rosy aroma. It's like Rose partying hard and went out and took loads of drugs. I did not just say that. Yes, it's very, very rosy. And yes, it's not a fresh type rose at all. It's a deep, sweet, semi-sweet kind of rose that feels very jammy. So it's almost like the kind of Turkish delighty type rose smells that you get in fragrances. I don't know what kind of rose it is. Maybe there's more than one. I don't know. Doesn't smell like rose there at all. So it's going to be a simple review because it's only got two things in it. And I've described the rose already. So the only other thing to mention is the frankincense. The frankincense only starts to come forward when this is starting to dry. It's abundantly rosy for a long time. Um, but then, yeah, the, the frankincense does start to show itself when it's dry. And it doesn't smell like incense-y frankincense. This feels to me a little bit more like the greener side of frankincense. When I've ever smelled frankincense on its own, I point over there because that's where my um, fragrance oils used to be, over there now. So when it used to be frankincense when I smelled it on its own, um, frankincense has a, a, a green type feel and it's actually sometimes quite fresh. So this is that side of frankincense. It's not the pious, 
Frenchy, a Frenchy, churchy, <laughs> incense-y, cathedral type incense that comes out of this. It's actually really lovely, it really is. If you're a rose lover, then this is probably going to be right up your street. It is rose in your face, whack, intensely jammy rose. Kind of cool. There's not really much more to say about it, it's a very quick, simple review. Rose Cross. Hmm. It feels like the rose pulls back a bit and the frankincense does start to come out, but the frankincense never takes over. The rose is the main star here. I mean, it's called Rose Cross. It's not called Frankincense Cross. I'll wear it a few more times before I, you know, eventually give it away. But um, I've, I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed the rosiness of it. I don't usually wear full-on rose fragrances apart from Stella, uh, which was my signature. Oh, rest in peace. But that's pretty much it. It's quite long lasting, it's okay, it's it's medium, it's it's B. Whenever I don't want to say medium, I say B, because you know you've got A, B and C. Oh, Diamonds, weirdo. So anyway, that's that's kind of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Simple yet effective, jammy strong rose with a frankincense that does kind of come out to play a little bit later on in the day. Anyway, much more note, down there to subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon for another review. How many words can I say in five minutes?